From Jason Miller's insane meltdown on national television to Akira Khorasani's cringy fake injury tactic against Dustin Nice, there are the Ultimate Fighter's worst moments so far. With an incredible 31 seasons under its belt, Ultimate Fighter has given us some amazing moments over the years. But the show's also had its fair share of crazy. I mean, who can forget Jason Miller's insane meltdown on national television? Back when news dropped that season 14 would star Miller and Michael Bisping, fans already knew they would be drama backstage. And man, did these two fighters clash like titans. From the day the promotions for the show started, tensions were high between them. From throwing insults in press conferences to almost fighting it out in official events, these two were ready for the middleweight fight. So when they finally stepped into the octagon, you can bet that everyone was tuning in to watch how it went down. But unfortunately for Miller and his team, all his trash talk resulted in an embarrassing TKO loss in the third round. But here's where it gets crazy. Because during the post-fight interview with Joe Rogan, Jason stumbled into the room wearing a pink boa and a gas mask, looking extremely confused. He even asked Rogan if he was fired. Talk about a total mind-bender. But wait, there's more. Apparently that knockout loss really did a number on Mayhem, since he quickly decided to leave the show and vanished from the arena without a word to anyone. So you can imagine the type of shockwaves this sent to the MMA world. Many fans questioned if Miller was mentally stable enough to be in the sport, but from there on out, Mayhem decided to permanently take a step back from the spotlight. While I'm on the topic of trash talkers who faced life-changing losses though, I have to mention Joseph Benavidez's drama with Henry Cejudo. Back in the 24th season, the Ultimate Fighter organizers put together a godlike cast to fight it out for a shot at Demetrius Johnson's UFC title. And while many fans predicted that this would be a tough battle to the top, all eyes were focused on two individuals, head coaches Joseph Benavidez and Henry Cejudo, and for good reason. Throughout the season, these two were at each other's throats, promising to deliver a first-round knockout as soon as they meet in the ring. So, after the season wrapped up, and the time finally came for these two coaches to settle their differences inside the octagon, it's safe to say that the crowd's expectations were sky high. But before they even stepped foot in the cage, the trash talk started flying again. Benavidez hit a low blow by mocking Cejudo's two consecutive losses. Cejudo fired back, promising to make Benavidez irrelevant. But things took a bad turn when Henry made a homophobic comment about his opponent. And you imagine how that went over with fans. When it came time to fight though, Joseph was the one who got the last laugh. They clashed in the co-main event of the Ultimate Fighter 24 finale, and after three hard-fought rounds, Benavidez came out on top with a split decision win. Sure, it was an incredible match that showcased their skills, but nobody could let go of the controversial comments made by the fighter. That's the thing though, fighters always try to get under each other's skins. Take the example of Ronda Rousey at Tough 18 when she flipped off Miesha Tate. These two were set to clash on September 4th, 2013 during the elimination fights in Las Vegas, Nevada. But their antics made headlines more than the fight itself. To be fair, they do have a lot of history together. And when Ronda and Miesha were chosen as coaches for the season, fans predicted it would get messy. After all, their rivalry goes way back to the time when they fought in Strike Force. Rousey pulled an armbar move on Tate and broke her bones. So clearly, she had a bone to pick. But here's the juicy part. During the elimination fights, Rousey's fighter, Shayna Baszler, faced off against Tate's fighter, Juliana Pina. And Pina pulled off the mother of all surprises by submitting Baszler. So you can see why Rousey wasn't happy. But Misha didn't care. And as she stepped up to shake Ronda's hand, she got hit with the ultimate curveball. Because Ronda straight up flipped her off. Naturally, this gesture caused quite a stir on social media. And while some people thought Rousey's move was justified, saying it was the perfect response to Tate's trash talking, not everyone was on Team Rousey. Critics slammed her for being disrespectful and lacking sportsmanship. And in the end, Ronda was forced to put out a public apology. So, the only good thing to come out of that season was the fact that it set the stage for their UFC women's bantamweight title fight at UFC 168. Talk about drama. But even then, 
Nothing comes close to being as dramatic as Colton Smith during Tough Season 16, because this fighter outright stole the keys to the winner's Harley Davidson. Colton Smith and Mike Ritchie were all set to battle it out in the finals for a six-figure UFC contract and a shiny new Harley Davidson motorcycle. And as part of the hype, they were handed keys to the bikes and asked to strike a pose. But Smith had another plan up his sleeve, because he swiped the keys from the locker and stashed them under his pillow, and then played dumb for the entire episode and acted like he had no clue what was going on. But you know what they say? The truth always finds its way out. And when Ricci got suspicious of this opponent, he confronted him, along with the one and only Dana White, the big boss of the UFC. And can I just say, getting Dana involved was a smart idea. Because Colton immediately fessed up, realizing that he'd taken things a bit too far. And even though he won the bike and the contract fair and square in the end, the amount of bashing he got on social media was insane. But hey, play stupid games and win stupid prizes, right? Even if the prize was being nicknamed Colton Thief and Colton Douchebag, but at least the backlash for this was understandable. I can't say the same about the scandal after Uriah Hall's spinning wheel kick knockout. If you don't already know, Uriah was the middleweight king, and he was stepping into the octagon during the Ultimate Fighter 17, where he was set to face off against Adam Seller. But little did he know, that he was about to be thrown in the middle of one of the biggest controversies in tough history. Because during the fight, Hall unleashed a spinning heel kick with such force that it connected straight with Seller's head, knocking him out cold. It was a jaw-dropping display of Hall's striking skills, and the impact was so bad that Seller struggled to get back up before being taken out of the arena on a stretcher. Intense, I know. But even though Uriah's knockout went down in history as one of the most brutal finishes ever, even Dana White couldn't help but admit that it was one of the nastiest knockouts he'd ever seen. Though it was also super controversial because critics questioned if he'd crossed a line with the violence. And considering how badly Adam was knocked out, it was a fair question. Many fans asked for Uriah to be banned or disqualified, and for Tuff to put out an official statement against the kick. But while Hall was able to get away with the win, Akira Khorasani's cringy fake injury tactic wasn't nearly as successful. The featherweight fighter stepped into the octagon during the Ultimate Fighter 14 finale, ready to face off against Dustin Nice. And while fans expected it to get crazy, nobody could have predicted what happened next. Because in the heat of the match, Nice unleashed a knee strike toward Khorasani's head while he was still on the ground. But it was Akira's reaction that caught everyone off guard. He immediately dropped to the canvas, clutching his face, and began rolling around in pain. And seeing his reaction, the referee stopped the fight and disqualified Dustin. But after fans did a little deep dive, they quickly found out Nice's knee never made contact with Khorasani's head and actually landed on his chest. Cue the outrage. Fans and fighters accused Khorasani of pulling off a Hollywood-worthy performance. Sure, the Swedish fighter denied the accusations, but the damage was already done. He became a joke on social media as MMA fans started calling him a fake and a flop. So you can see why Khorasani's credibility took a big hit that night. And with even his former coach, Michael Bisping, calling out his behavior, the star really dug his own grave that day. So there you have it. From Akira Khorasani's cringy fake injury tactic against Dustin Nice to Jason Miller's insane meltdown on national television, those were the ultimate fighter's worst moments so far.